you want, yeah, and have at it and go from there. All right, so continuing in our approach of basically looking at things that are flying in the sky, it's interesting to me when an article pops up, and it's especially through Vertical Mag or, or one of the, re- the magazines that we read on a regular basis, and out pops basically an understanding that the helicopter market is not dead. There's still competitors that want to enter the helicopter market, and one of them happens to be Hill. Now, Hill Helicopters, which is very, very strange, is trying to take a different approach towards certification. The helicopter in and of itself is not strange or ugly, okay? The the helicopter is actually quite gorgeous. They're using advanced technologies. They're going with the old-style format, the Fenestron tail, which is basically a copy of a Eurocopter to a degree, retractable landing gear as it appears here, and this thing is absolutely and totally gorgeous. There is no denying the fact that in a, in a tri-bladed system, mm-hmm. which is going to appear to be very smooth, the, the actual physical structure of the aircraft being five seats and turbine powered is phenomenal. It is basically looking to break into the entire industry as a whole, where basically this, this other part would normally fall to like a Robinson R44 or maybe a right. Bell 505, which is the old variant or the newer variant of the 206, and mm-hmm. bring people the actual opportunity to fly and own a turbine helicopter, which is amazing. Yep. Okay, and, and that's really nice. It's really nice to see that someone is having the forethought to do this. However, the way that they're going to do it is normally the process that it takes or what it would take to certify a helicopter in any way, shape, shape or form is lengthy, meaning that in order for you to apply for the type certification, in order for the FAA to approve it, in order for it to become um, provable as a test flying bed and then make it through the, the subsequent testing there and thereafter, could take five years. Okay, And yep. it's expensive. It's not a cheap prices, uh, process because your maintenance programs have to be approved. The maintenance on the aircraft, the airframe, the power plant, all these other parts have to be approved. However, there is one way around that. And they're looking at this as part of a possibility. That is, they plan to bring it to market by making you, yes, you, part of the process in the certification and building mm-hmm. of the helicopter. And by yep. doing such, they, they're they attempting to bring this helicopter to market at a cost of about $665,000 US. So for yeah. a five-seat helicopter to hit the marketplace... Turbine. Turbine, yeah, turbine, right? To hit the marketplace. And you guys can go and look at the research on your own. This thing is gorgeous. It's beautiful. Uh, I've already gone at length as to what it it actually means, but Corey, you just hit on it. What do you think that that means towards the marketplace and helicopters? A five seat turbine coming in at under seven hundred thousand, which could be approved using the home build kind of process with the tutelage of the company to bring it to market possibly two to three years sooner. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty interesting. I mean, one thing, just expand on what Mike was saying. Uh, reading through, it looks like uh, the way you're going to interact with the company in terms of building it is it looks like an on-site. So you actually, it's not sold as a kit. I think I'm not sure you mentioned that, but it's not as a, it's not kit. No, you it's not a kit. Yeah. Like as a kit. Right. You go to the actual factory and you spend. I think it says like a two-week course. Uh, building the machine Mm -hmm. Uh, you're guided by the licensed um, mechanics and uh, designers like they're at the course right so they're literally helping you go through it so obviously it would would help if you're like an amp or something or you know somewhat mechanically inclined to know but that would help they didn't they're not saying that that's required Um, so again you know you're going to be there with the you know the experts at the factory on-site building your machine in person um and for that, like you said, to be a five seat, uh, looks like it comes with glass. I'm wondering what kind of like avionics are included and all that, but you know, details, details, sure. but, um, it's quite intriguing to, like you said, a five seat, it looked right. reminds me of the, an, an H one sixty. It looks, it's an attractive it, it looking does, machine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it does. Um, it's a turbine, it's three bladed. Uh, I didn't see are the blades most probably are composite blades. I mean, it's. It's intriguing. I want to see exactly about the certification process because one thing to note is usually amateur built aircraft can't be used for commercial ops. Right. So I'm still a little bit wondering how that goes for this because it's not it's it's amateur built, but it's not like you know what I mean. Like it's I'm not quite sure. It's still gorgeous. Um, number one, how this goes. Um, neither do neither am I. And the other part of it is that I think the other stipulation is you have to build at least fifty one percent 
of the aircraft is is one of the okay. things that they're saying as well in order for it to get around this particular this part of the the certification process however <laughs> yeah if they do go if they short you know if they short that lengthy process and they have the ability to bring this thing to market it you know at that price that's that's profound i think oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah i think it's re- yeah. you know this really 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 it says they have an opportunity. Now, the thing is, we've seen this type of opportunity fail also before in this marketplace, although I don't think I've seen this approach in particular. But in the interior of this thing looks gorgeous. I mean, it's just absolutely it phenomenal. These are obviously renders, um, but it looks really, really intriguing. Like you said, I would be very interested to uh, uh, <laughs> to literally talk to these people, too. Right. And, uh, you know, see, see what, you know, the inner details we can maybe get. Um, one thing to note, I, again, as you, we're not sure where you guys are visiting us from, but it's something to note that in here they do specify the HX50 is what it's called, is being designed to meet FAN European uh, EASA standards, uh, certification standards. Uh, so it's they're aiming to be able to go anywhere with this thing, obviously. Mm-hmm. So um, it's it's quite interesting. Um it says basically they're on their way to having a flying prototype. So they, they, they actually does not appear. They have a flying model yet or a flying, you know, actual unit uh, prototype flying. Right. So we'll see. I'm very interested to see not only what it looks like when it's uh, like the final design, let's call it, but also what they might say about um, <laughs> the packages. Like who, what are they actually thinking to build? Because like Mike, you kind of alluded to on a moment ago, they're like how much a percentage of the owner or of someone like that does does have to to build it for it to for it to still fall under whatever business model they're going as far as certification. Right, right, uh, right. Because in a two week course with somebody who's not mechanically inclined, are you? I mean, is it going to be like big components are built and you're putting them together and like you know that kind of thing, or you're you're not gonna you can't possibly be inside. So, you know, you're not going to wire the whole thing yourself. No. I, you know, I, I just don't see stuff like that happening. I mean, there's miles of wire in these things. So uh, it's interesting. I, I, yeah, it's one of these. I just want to know more. I yes. do. Because I, do I, more? I yes. see there. Yeah, uh, I do. I do. I see their ideal option yeah. for private owners is listed here, but it doesn't. You're right. Yeah. It doesn't give yeah. any. It says factory built comprehensive uh, hands on factory training. It, it turns around and, it, and it's building a case for basically they're going to be part of what it, it sounds like your management and ownership of the aircraft, so you really can't make any mistakes there. And at that cost, again, that could be revolutionary in the way that it approaches it. If if it can do this, okay, it it's um it's interesting to me to see how they're going to be able to get this done. But um, could be, could be neat. there something something of note here? I'm reading the details that that m- might be something for us to watch. It does say in here that. Um, the UK CAA has been, quote, incredibly supportive, end quote, of the concept to date. And while Brexit has caused angst in some corners of the aerospace industry, uh, the, the gentleman they interviewed is optimistic it will provide an advantage for the HX50. And then they go on to talk about, obviously, Brexit and how um, uh, the UK CAA is no longer, you know, there's going to be its own entity, any, you know, not connected to EASA. We're a little bit maybe slightly off topic, but if you guys know what I'm talking about, basically there's like the FA in America and then all the states are authorized under the FA, right? FA rules. Right. Over in the European Union, when before the UK left or, you know, England, the UK left Bre- through Brexit left, they their aviation industry was still connected through EASA as well. But they still had their own uh, authority called the UK CAA, the Civil Aviation Authority. Well, now that the, obviously Brexit's happened, the CAA and the UK is going to have a bit more of its own autonomy, obviously. Right. And mm-hmm. it appears that uh, Hill Helicopters is uh, kind of going after a bit of the UK CA for their certification. Uh, <laughs> although that's a that's a, maybe a whole other question to you know see because I'm not up to speed on the exact the newest things on what. Okay, if an aircraft is let's say in the test phase now uh, now certified under the UK CA. How does that look to get it certified under EASA over in the rest well, of Europe? And we have experience with some of that. Because I don't know. We, yeah, yeah. We, we've dealt with that. We've dealt with those that kind of questions before, and in, in our previous one of our previous jobs. And um, so, yeah, integrating something between the EASA and the FAA turns out to be sometimes a difficult experience. It can be, and knowing yeah, knowing that some of those regulations yeah. kind of tie over closely, but sometimes they're 
the asset tends to have a slightly different standard, which you have to meet is going to be difficult. Although, wait, look at this one. This is, this is something that I find really great. It does but, have 500 millimeter wide seats, which is great because half the helicopter seats in the industry suck. Number two, it's got four point harnesses, which is nice. <laughs> Number three, yeah. it's got full climate control, full what? climate control and what? Bluetooth connectivity. Now, now, Corey and I can speak to the fact that flying helicopters in 90 degree plus heat without air conditioning sucks. <laughs> In black pants, in black you know, because you got to look, you got to look the part, you know, yes. you got your professional job and it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. it's. Uh, I'm going to smile and keep doing my thing, but I am on fire. My <laughs> legs are burning off my body. So anyhow, folks, yeah. uh, just to introduce that one to you, we're, we're going to, we're going to probably try to explore more on this, but it's an interesting concept to see come out into the helicopter industry yep. to see that it's no, not, it. it's not dead. Uh, they're, you know, they're, they're going to be actually taking up their stances and trying to produce a better equipment to compete with a, a vertical flight future that we see is being challenged all the time. So uh, good to see that that traditional type of flying might still exist. We'll see. Mm. Awesome. And remember, if you get a chance and you like what we have to say, like, subscribe, follow. And we appreciate all the massive growth here in the channel. And we've got one other thing that strikes a little close to home on this one. And going back to our roots of gaming, uh, Corey's going to talk to you about well, <laughs> something aliens, man. Aliens, you want?